In this video, I wanted to go over the ECS architecture that's available built into Stride. Um, I will warn you now, it's not pure ECS in the sense of something like Svelto ECS or Arch, because uh, you do have the overhead of Stride entities uh, in the background, uh, but it does have the same component architecture and a very similar, at least, performance gain compared to default Stride. Um, so, what we have here is the same scene I showed off a few days ago with the 10,000 entities running around uh, in a scene. Um, that one was used with a single update script uh, that was updating about 1,000 entities per frame. This is able to do all 10,000 entities at once in a single processor, which is the system of the ECS architecture. What Stride uses is something called entity processors, and I'll show that to you here in the code. So this is the processor uh, for the pathfinding of the of the units, and uh, then you also have the component that is attached to each entity. And this component I made just has a very simple reference to the pathfinder script I have that's in my core folder here, um, that can find a path and just traverse it uh, whenever called. All the logic is actually within the pathfinding processor. Um, and there's two options here I tried. One was updating all 10,000 uh, as fast as I can. And the other one is updating in batches. The weird thing is I noticed the batch script was actually slower. Um, so I'm not sure what I did differently compared to the last time. But for some reason in, in an entity processor, uh, it was running a lot worse. So um, you can pull this project down. It's on my GitHub. Uh, to try for yourself. So you can switch these out and just give them a shot. Uh, this also contains the uh, regular scene of non-ECS, uh, same design style. So it's a single update script, but uh, not using an entity processor right here. So it's just the instance pathfinding that you'd have to open, uh, set as the game settings scene, and you can use that. Uh, so I'll show that off right now uh, as to how fast this can be. And you'll see that it runs a lot better than the previous video I had does um it's the same amount of entities exact same model and it's updating all 10,000 as fast as it can with nearly the same frame rate i've had it settle in uh at around uh 100 110 120 you can see the the less i move my camera it seems to get better um i wonder if it's going to hit 120 again yeah so it seems to be hitting about 100 i'd say consistently um, but nearly the same performance while updating 9,000 more entities um, per update, which is insane. Um, so I'll just walk you through how this works um, and just how easy it is to set up. Uh, ignoring all of this, really, um, this is all the update script is doing. So it's calling the components pathfinder uh, that's attached on the pathfinding component here. Um, and it's just moving the entity, rotating it, and then uh, this delays the waypoint change. So I only want them to update every, I think it's every second or something the way I have set up now. Um, so yeah, every second it's updating. Or sorry, every second it's updating uh, a new path for the entity to follow. Um, that's really all this is. So it's basically this call to update all. It updates every entity's component. And then it uh, uh, delays the change of the waypoint finding by a second. There's nothing special really going on. Um, in order to set up an entity processor, all you need to do is uh, inherit from entity processor, add the component that the processor should look for. So any entity in a scene that has this component will show up in um, this values parameter here. Um, so that's how you access every entity in the scene that has that component attached to it. Um, there's another demo I'll do in another video uh, where you can attach, you can check for multiple components attached to a single entity. Um, and I'll, I'll go into that in the next video. For this one, we just care if there's a pathfinding component and then that's it. The other part of this is the actual component script. So we have a few attributes here, and that's the only reason this is actually somewhat interesting, is you have a data contract here. All this does is allows you to attach this script to any entity within your scene. Um, and then there's also the default entity component processor. So what this does is it creates the entity processor in the scene if it doesn't already exist. 
Um, so you can access this entity processor from anywhere within the services of the game. This is another interesting thing. So we have access to this execution mode here. And what this execution mode does uh, is I only want it to run at runtime. But another thing you can do here, and again, I'll go into this in the other video, um, is you can have it run in editor. So it'll actually try to edit or update within the game studio. Um, and there's also the preview, uh, which will try to update in the little preview window that shows in the bottom right of stride. Um, so those are really cool things. Uh, I didn't mess with the preview, but I did mess with the um, runtime and editor quite a bit. Um, and we'll go into that more in the next video. Um, and that's it. So there's a component uh, with a Pathfinder script. This is all within my project. I created this a long time ago in my GitHub. Uh, totally available for you to use whatever, uh, whenever you want. Uh, it's very, very basic. Um, and then it also has the pathfinding processor. Um, after that, all you need to do is attach the entity uh, or the script to the entity. So I have a prefab here with the entity attached. Um, so we have the pathfinder and we have the pathfinding component. The processor does not need to go anywhere. You don't have to care about that at all. As long as you have the processor created with the attribute or you add it manually into a scene, um, you're good to go. Anything with this component will update with that one processor. And that's it. That's the entire setup of the uh, built-in ECS architecture within Stride, um, which is amazing. The reason, by the way, uh, you don't see a mesh in here is because I'm using instance meshes. So it doesn't actually grab this mesh until it gets loaded into the scene. So don't worry about that. That's unrelated to this specific issue. That instancing uh, example is just a way to make meshes much more efficient when they're running in game. Um, so just ignore that part. Uh, the main point is have find a component and that's it. Everything else is done for you. So all your logic that you had within a sync script um, is now just within this single processor updating each component um, when you need it. And that's the entire video. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Um, I will be following this up with another video involving how you can create plugins for the um is that right yeah with the scene editor view um yeah if you have any questions let me know down below and i'll answer them as best i can